Hi, welcome to the next assembly video for the RepRap Perugia Mendel Iteration 2. In the last video, we calibrated the stepper motors. Um, and uh, what we did was we measured uh, the distance that uh, the X axis, Y axis, Z axis, and extruder moved. And then we updated the values in the firmware. And then we uploaded the firmware to the electronics. And you could use a, you could have used a previous video describing how to upload the firmware to the electronics in order to get that done. And then once you once you uploaded the firmware, it's a good idea to go back again and just make sure that um, that they are actually that the axes are actually moving to the um, the desired distance. And I've, I've already done that, so I've I've been through the process twice now, and everything is is calibrated really really well. So at this point, um, the printer is essentially done. All we have left to do now is to feed the filament and start printing. So we're gonna do that in this video now. So now in a previous video, we, we did already get the filament started in the extruder here. And so next what we need to do is we need to turn the hot end on. So I'm gonna do that in the software. I'm gonna set the hot end to um, 185 degrees Celsius. Okay, the temperature is rising right now, um, and printer face will actually give you a readout of the temperature um, from the thermistor. And right now it says that it's at seventy degrees Celsius and it's rising. So um, now, if you kind of missed earlier how how to load the extruder, you know it's not it's not too difficult. All you need to do is use your thumb to push. to push the idler out and then um, feed feed this in just a little bit into the hobbed bolt. Once it grips it just a little bit, that's fine. Then you can use the proctor face software to feed the extruder and since it grabs onto the filament, it'll actually start to uh, pull it down. Now right now, I just have this in here about 10 millimeters. So um, as soon as the hot end gets hot enough, I'll be able to go ahead and extrude it all the way down. Um, you don't want to do that with a cold hot end because the, the filament will just jam and what happens when the, when the filament jams is um, the hob bolt will try to will try to move the filament and since the filament can't move it'll just uh, it'll take a chunk out of the filament and then you'll have to uh, pull all the filament out and re reload it again. So it's very important that the hot end be hot before you try to extrude with it. Okay, it's up to temperature now, and so I can go ahead and start extruding. So I'm going to go ahead and extrude at 5 millimeter increments, and then I'm going to watch the nozzle and see when it starts coming out here. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, that's 5 millimeters. Another 5 millimeters. Another 5. I like to wait just a, a second or two before I go another five millimeters to make sure I don't clog it, clog it up. And I'm also watching the filament here. You can see, with you know, when light reflects off of the filament, you can see it actually move downward. So I'm just making sure it's still moving. So that looks good so far. Should be hitting the nozzle soon. There we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and push another five millimeters through here. Okay, that looks good. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull it off with some pliers. All right. And then I'm going to go ahead and shut it off in the software. So I just turned the hot end down to zero now. 
So that's going to go ahead and cool down. That's perfect. Now it's loaded. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and move this over. Turn off the motors. Move this over to its home position here, or close to it anyway. All right, and now we're ready to move to the computer. Okay, now we're at the computer. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, double check the um, the slicer settings here. So I'm going to go ahead and open up slicer. I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop the 20 millimeter cube into here. I'm going to delete the old the old G code. Okay, and I'm just going to go through the settings real quick just to make sure. Okay, I want my layer height to be 0.3 millimeters. Okay, that looks good. Okay. Okay, now for the filament diameter, now you actually want to go ahead and measure this with the caliper. So you just want to measure the diameter. Mine is actually 2.83 millimeters. Um, it's not always exactly three millimeters, so you do need to measure it and make sure it's it's set in here correctly. All right. Now I'm going to want um, my extruder temperature to be um, 190, actually, for the first layer and for each additional layer. And I do want to enable cooling since I have a fan installed. And I just always keep that on. That would be fine. All right. Okay, so this looks uh, this looks pretty good. Um, I'm not sure. Okay, under the extruder settings here, you need to set the nozzle diameter. And mine is 0.5 millimeters, so that's perfect. And everything else here looks good. Okay. So I just wanted to double check those settings, make sure it's good. And um, you can actually save these to, to profiles. So I'm just going to call this, uh, uh, I'm going to call this one um, RepRap9. Um, yeah, let's see. And for filament. I got this at Ulta Machine, and it's their black PLA. Okay, and then um, oh, I see. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep that specific to the rep wrap, and then so I'll save this one too. That's rep wrap nine. Okay. All right, looks good. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, make sure that it's set up for those settings down here at the bottom, and then export the G-code to the desktop. And then I'm going to go to uh, Proctor Face here. I'm going to load the 20 millimeter G-code. Okay, it's loaded up. It says it's going to take about 20 minutes to print. And um, let's go ahead and give it a shot. I'm going to hit print. And I'm going to go to the printer and see how things are going. Okay, I'm back at the printer. And um, so that 20 millimeter cube that I set to print in the uh, printer face software is now printing on the printer. And I can already see that um, it looks like I'm having some, I have a problem here with the print height. So I'm going to have to adjust that. I think that my my paper method didn't work out quite too well. So to compensate for this, I can do a couple of things. Um, after this finishes printing, I can either uh, decrease my print bed height manually by, uh, by actually adjusting the METs, or I could go into the, um, into the slicer software and make an adjustment there. The benefit of doing it um, physically 
is that you would be able to, you know, use these settings possibly for another printer. Um, but I'm probably just going to make the adjustment in the slicer program so I don't have to make any hardware tweaks. But, um, but other than that, I mean, it looks like it's working. It's extruding just fine. Um, it might be extruding a little too much material, and that's, a, again, that's something I could adjust in the slicer program. But it's hard, kind of hard to tell because the print height is is wrong. Um, sometimes that can make it look like it's extruding more material than it's supposed to be extruding. So anyway, so once this is done printing um, with a proper bed height, you can then take the actual measurements from this. You can measure the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis on this 20 millimeter cube. And you could use those those measurements to adjust your firmware, just like we did when we adjusted the stepper motors earlier. Except instead of adjusting it to uh, how you know how far the bed actually moved and how far the x-axis actually moved, you can adjust it based on you know what size the part actually turned out. Essentially, the process is exactly the same. You just measure the cube instead of the distance of travel. So I'm not going to make a video for that. I think that. Um, you know, if, if anybody requests it, I could definitely make a video, but um, I think it's pretty self-explanatory, and I'll th I don't think you'll have any troubles with that. But uh, So this is looking pretty good. I think this is going to print out just fine. Not bad for a first print. You know, I believe that if you were to follow all the same steps that I showed you, that uh, you'll have just as much success. That's it. This wraps up everything. This is the final video. So I really hope that uh, you enjoyed the process. I hope that your rep wrap is working as good as this one is. I'm really happy with these results so far. Look forward to, uh, to doing so, a whole lot of printing with this printer. So it's been a lot of fun. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye.